Uh, on that note, let's perhaps pass over to Paul then and give you the opportunity to uh, uh, respond. Or maybe we'll go for lady first. Pauling sure. instead sure. of Pauling. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we were just joking about it. He's Pauline, and I'm Pauline with an E ah. at, the, at the end of it. So anyways, um, for, for those who, uh, who, who, who weren't here yesterday, my name's Pauline. I'm with uh, Nissan Zero Emission Business Unit. And um, as Vivian rightly put it uh, about the price, um, it's true. Um, uh, it's, it's a new technology, so there's a price premium to it. But the thing is, um, well, let me go into my, my speech now. Uh, what are the key messages I've prepared for today? Um, basically, I was given five minutes yesterday, and, and, and that was you know, too brief. Uh, but at least that gave you a snapshot of what the LEAF is and the fact that it's coming to the market in, in December in the US and, uh, and, and as well as Japan. Now, when we first started on this, um, this road uh, to EV, uh, we did a, obviously a lot of market research. Um, and there were three key barriers to, to customer acceptance. One being uh, range, uh, which is what in, in the industry we term as range anxiety. And I think this has been covered to, to a certain extent um, you know, in, in the two days uh, about the fact that in most cities you do, probably don't need more than 160 kilometers of, of range uh, in one day. So it's all about consumer behavior. Um, the second one was price. Uh, the second barrier that we found out from consumers was price. And so as car makers, obviously, um, at the end of the day, we, we, we are in the business of uh, making cars and selling them for a profit. So so uh, there is no going about it. We're, we're, we're not, uh, you know. Uh, at the same time, we have to balance our priority for doing better for the uh, for the world, for for the environment, um, and at the same time, making our product a, a value proposition for the customers. Um, so that's why our agenda, when we go out, we're talking to governments, to cities, in in seeking partnerships. And, and Vivian has been a staunch supporter here in Hong Kong, so we thank her for it, um, is to try and get um, um, uh, governments to subsidize us. So in the US, um, we have 7,500 uh, incentives that helps the grill, grill to bring down the uh, MSRP, the price tag on the car, um, in the US to between 25 to 26,000. Um, that's based on just your federal incentive of 7,500. And then on top of that, we've got very generous uh, cities, uh, sorry, cities and states that's giving us um, on top of the 7,500 um, additional incentives. So that helps to bring down the, uh, the price uh, barrier and makes it competitive. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going on, uh, but I, I want to continue in another point. It's the total cost of ownership. Um, this, I think, um, Nakamura-san mentioned earlier. Um, it's really talking about um, the overall cost of ownership, the lifetime of uh, owning the car. Um, this goes back to a message I had because I, I, I talked to my parents. My dad doesn't understand what I do. So I told him, you know, I'm talking about promoting EVs and he's like, okay, you know. Um, so I said, he says, I'm not going to go out and buy one because, you know, you know it's, it's good for the environment. He understands that. He understands the concept of EV. But he's not going to be out there first in row to go, go knocking at our D Nissan dealership to get a car. You know, but then I told him, you know, think about it in terms of the cost of ownership. It's going to be cheaper for you to run because, you know, you plug in and you charge in based on your electricity. It's going to be cheaper than to refuel your car. Then he goes like, oh, okay, that, that might be good for me to save a little bit more on my retirement check. So that's where you really need to get through that barrier with people in terms of, um, you know, having that value proposition. Because I understand there's a need for people to want mobility. I mean, the whole thing about America's and freedom of, of having a car. Um, but at the same time, there are other alternatives. So in Japan, for example, we're looking at car sharing. So in the, uh, well, I guess in, in the day-to-day, -day, most people in Japan take the subways anyway. So in the weekends, if you want a car, you can go and join a, a car uh, sharing or go to a car rental um, and, and get an alternative SUV if you've got a big family or whatever. But there are alternatives to your lifestyle. So we are not talking that EV is the only car for everybody. It's the car for some people. It's the car for, um, we think ideally in urban communities. Um, and, and, uh, and that's more or less it. I know I'm giving a very wrong answer, so I better stop uh, while I'm ahead. So thank you. Thank you. Um, just, uh, very good. Just uh, before uh, 
Paul, and I, and I think we should keep the manufacturers uh, uh, responding to this one before we give, give other people a chance. But a uh, question for Nissan, um, Pauline. The, the, uh, why can't you write off the capital cost even more and just collect it over time? So make the cars cheaper today, you get faster uptake, you sell more units, and uh, we, we all win. Well, it's, you're right. It's a win-win situation. So it's win for us, uh, the OEM, uh, win for, for the cities uh, with their very ambitious CO2 reduction targets, and win for the customer at the end of the day. It's the, the real win for the customer that's most important. Um, and and I, I don't have slides here, but one of the things we talk about is the in the in the early adoption curve is that obviously in the beginning there is going to be a cost premium because the, the battery is still a very, very expensive component of the car. I mean, we talk about different models where you buy the car without batteries, you know, no batteries included. You've got the better place models and all that. But the, the, at the end of the day, the value proposition is that, you know, the, the battery is so expensive. So at the end of the day for us, after, say, eight years of, of, uh, of, um, of uh, the life cycle, it still has 80%. So Nissan right now is doing a, what we call a 4R business, which means to ensure re the residual value of the car, which is, you know, the big part of it is the battery. We want to take back the batteries. Um, you know, we, we want those batteries because we can do a lot more with those batteries. We can resell them to uh, property developers for um, energy storage for, for solar panels. Uh, we talk about utilities using it for energy storage, for uh, grid leveling or lo load leveling and, and capturing um, energy from wind turbines. So that helps to, to, to ensure the residual value. I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a big ticket uh, item, obviously. And the last part is, is uh, uh, volume. That's, that's going to really make it work. Um, so which is why in the beginning, um, without critical volume, we, we will have to struggle because we are working, we, which is why we need the help from the government. The incentives is critical. Uh, but once you get the volume, uh, that's going to drive the, 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 you know, the, the economies of scale, which is, uh, which is the fact that you're going to be able to bring down the cost of manufacturing. Uh, for the vehicles, and hopefully that will drive down the cost. But you r need first to get to get critical mass volume, um, and that's the golden question. So with everybody's mm -hmm. help, we can get there. Great, thank you very much, Paul. Yes, Pauline just mentioned something about the battery. I have something to show with everyone here as well. Um, for BYD electric vehicle, actually we produce most of the key components by ourselves, including of course battery, electric motor, battery control, manage battery management system, also the car itself. We only sell source the glass and the tire nowadays from outside. Even we are now using cooperate with Bosch to equip with ESP. <laughs> so, but mainly what we calculate, actually the most important thing for the coming era of electric vehicle is the entry angle. It's how to reach the break event point, just like Pauline just mentioned, the volume and the quantity, how to go in in first beginning. Um, and for BYD, we think the volume actually is quite easy to achieve that, especially the volume is mainly talking about the battery, the battery pack. So our idea nowadays is we're going to make a standard battery pack, not only for the EV, but also for the station I just present to everyone here. If we call it energy storage station, like using the same battery cell. We call it just make it more similar to AAA, AA, make it to be a standard power battery. And even after the battery used for the vehicle, we can recycle the battery in the power state power station in this kind of energy storage station because they go for further volume. And besides that, for BYD, we also think, because we are a China-based company, so we're more focused at this moment for China market. It's the first market we should consider it. So for China, uh, the taxi and the public market is huge. It's 1.2 million pieces of vehicle. 1.2 million units. We think even we can take 5% of the market share, eventually we can easily pass the break even point and we can lower down the cost of the vehicle. We can go to the 
to be a public choice. But besides that, I think the, if you, I'm allowed to say the government can do a lot of things more. If I think, in, in my personal opinion, if the technology is already being tested, the technology is available for the market, I think it's very easy to make the public accept the green, green transportation in a very short terms, in very short time beings. Uh, especially if you raise up the tax of the, of the petroleum, if, allowed, if I'm allowed to say that, <laughs> it could easily um, reduce the parking fee for the pure electric vehicle. But nowadays, I think for the uh, government, uh, every city government, you are also looking for a break-even point. It's when the technology is ready, when the people are ready to accept that. But of course, I th believe that it will be after reach our OEM's break-even point. Great, thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, Mr. Nakamura, perhaps you'd like to add from Mitsubishi. Yeah, the the other maker, maybe the already two uh, guy already explained about our position. So uh, many people say that the what is the uh, strongness of EV for gasoline vehicle? Of course, everybody know that that's good for the environmental issue, but. Uh, only the, the thinking of the environmental issue, even people know where of that. Everyone say that the, we have to move to low carbon society. But uh, once they ask, you will buy EV or not? They say that so high, prices are so high than a uh, gasoline vehicle, and the distance is so small. So the, not only EV, uh, simply say that if we uh, face to something new, we may have some passive, or uh, how can I say, the, the negative the feeling. Same thing for the EV. So uh, first of all, we need momentum. So the, in order to have the momentum, we need several uh, support from the government. But a uh, point I would like to say, say is, we, manufacturer, we do our best. So the cost will go down. But uh, at the first stage, we need something from the support from the outside, not only government, also society. The society means understanding of the EV. So the, uh, even the their under, uh, people understand of the necessity of low carbon society, the negative comment, the, some of the problem will be solved by uh, economical support from the government. But we, manufacturer know well, we cannot depend on uh, so much and uh, for a long time. So the, within uh, three or four years, we have to have a competitive or a, a balanced uh, uh, all condition, economy and performance and uh, ecology. Ecology, no problem. So uh, next question is economy and the performance. And in case of the performance, everybody say that distance. but. Uh, now we are not doing the gasoline vehicle discussion. We need uh, 200 kilometer or 300 kilometer because of the, according to our uh, survey, the in case of Japan, only the my mother say uh, more than 80 percent, near to 9 percent people are driving only 40 kilometer or well, at least less than 50 kilometer per day, even in the weekend. Uh, more than the 80 percent people are driving less than 60 kilometers per day. So, uh, of course, I don't want to say everybody is a soul, but uh, so the big number of people in the driving is short. Uh, so, uh, I think there is the role for EV even in this moment. Another view is the, the working EV vehicle, the, for example, taxi. What delivery unit. So the, in the weekday, there are so many vehicles running. For example, the taxi case, big issue is idling. Even idling, the CO2 is emitted. So uh, if we switch the t taxi from gasoline to EV, we can e emit the CO2. So uh, I want to say is there are several ways to give the uh, how can I say, happiness or satisfaction to the customer. 
uh, not only focusing on the price and long distance. Uh, sorry, the, that's my comment. Okay.